and welcome back to my kitchen. In a previous video I've shown you how to break down a duck and I mentioned in that video that the duck breasts were going to be used for a special meal tonight and it's tonight. So the meal itself consists obviously of the duck breasts. I'm going to make a red currant sauce to go with them. I'm going to serve them with a puree of cauliflower, um, some purple sprouting broccoli because it's banging season right now and also I'm going to make some black pudding bonbons. I'm a huge fan of black pudding. It is a blood sausage, it does divide people, I understand that, but it's also part of nose to tail eating. Most butchers of any re repute will make their own black pudding, so find one that you like and then you can use it in this dish. So let's start with the black pudding bonbons. I've got some breadcrumbs here, it happens to be made with my own bread but that's no consequence. These are dried breadcrumbs, kind of like panko breadcrumbs, not, not the slightly soft, wetter breadcrumbs. I prefer them for, for just about everything, but occasionally the wet ones are quite useful for stuffing and things like that. So I've also got here some black pudding. I've blitzed this black pudding up in a mini blitzer, um, so it's almost like tiny, tiny pebbles. And a single egg is also what I have. So I'm only going to put about a handful into what must be nearly five, well, 400 grams probably of black pudding. And I'm just going to sprinkle a handful and a bit in. I'm also then going to break the egg into that hole like that and I'm going to mix that whole thing up. The egg and breadcrumbs just help the bonbon bind a little bit. It's not entirely necessary, it just makes it a little stickier to itself. I'm mixing those up. You can see that there are some quite large chunks of, of black pudding in there. It's not, it's not a complete dust um, of black pudding. So they're nicely mixed now and this is the bit where you have to get your hands a bit grubby and it's all a bit sticky. You're looking for about 25 to 30 grams. So, something probably about that size. Let's see how good I am. 30 grams exactly. So, you make that, squeeze it into a ball about that size. And let's see if I can hit 30 grams again. Yep, 30 grams. Luck, my luck is definitely in today. I'm now going to put in about 100 grams and it'll all go horribly wrong, I'm sure, but there we go. Ha! <laughs> 30 again. Crumbs. So we have 10 bonbons and a little cheeky extra bonbon, probably a chef's treat in the kitchen a little bit later. These now need to go into the fridge, 10-15 minutes only, just to firm up a tiny bit before we breadcrumb them. The bonbons that we made earlier have been in the fridge for 10-15 minutes. They've firmed up quite nicely. Um, and now it's time to breadcrumb them. In posh French chefy terms, pané them from the French pain for bread. Very simple process breadcrumbing. Into the flour first, roll it round so that the product is completely coated in flour. Into egg wash. This egg wash is made up of two eggs, a tiny dash of milk, and a twist of salt. The salt's important because it helps to break down the albumen, the white part of the egg, and make it coat the whole of the bonbon. Then into the breadcrumbs, and we use the glue of that egg and flour to create a breadcrumbed bonbon, like that. Time for time lapse. So there we go then, that's all our bonbons made. They need to go back into the fridge for 10-15 minutes if you're using them immediately or until it's time to finally cook them off. So it's time to really get dinner started. Um, I have a cauliflower here in a pan, um, broken down. It does not matter if you have too much cauliflower for this dish. The cauliflower puree you're going to make will easily the following day turn into a beautiful cauliflower soup, especially if you added some blue cheese to it maybe and a little bit more seasoning. So into that cauliflower I'm going to add some lovely vegetable stock and that's going to take it something like halfway up. And I'm also going to add double cream. Then I'm going to turn it on and I'm going to make it boil for about 10-15 minutes, slightly longer than you'd expect for um, for a dish of this sort, specifically for cauliflower, but I want it to properly break down when I puree it. So here's our cauliflower. It's been boiling for about 10-15 minutes. As you can see, it will break down quite easily at this stage, which is kind of what you want. We're going to load up the gadget and then blitz it. A 
as ever with these things, always worth giving it a little longer than you think, just to get that real smoothness. This is now going to go back in the pan, and if it's a little slack, I'm going to give it a little more time to reduce, and if it's a little firm, I might add a little bit of extra milk. Okay, time to get serious. I've got a frying pan, nice and hot, with the tiniest little bit of oil in it there. Now, the dangerous bit. I have a pan here with less than a third of the depth of frying oil, cooking for some deep fat frying for the bonbons. I cannot stress how important it is you keep an eye on this. It's very dangerous to leave deep fat frying without looking at it. It's very dangerous to leave cooking anyway, but deep fat frying is the one that does real damage. On the back, I've got my puree sitting nice and warm. And here I have a pan full of water with a steamer on top. More of that in the minute. But here we go. What I've done with, to the duck breasts is I've scored them across the fat, not cutting through the flesh, whoops, I have a little there, but not cutting through the flesh at all if I can avoid it, just so that the fat renders out of it. I'm gonna put them fat side down in the pan, that wonderful, wonderful sound, and they will fizzle and spit at me a little bit. What I really want to do is I really want to take all that fat out of that skin and leave it crispy without a kind of chewy fat at the end. I'm gonna initially cook them in the pan and then I'm going to transfer them to my oven to finish. Um, that, again, sounds very chef -y. it's not really. It just gives them a better cooking through. Um, and it also buys you a bit of time if you have guests or something like that. It makes life just that little bit easier. Please notice I'm not turning them over, and I'm not tempted to. I have shuffled them a bit in the pan, but I'm not tempted to turn them over. This fat is very, very hot in this pan now. And I'm just going to grab two of the bonbons. And I'm not gonna drop them in, because the fat will spit. I am going to lower them in. As they are now sizzling nicely. And a second two, I'm also going to just gently lower into the pan and let them sizzle. Now, black pudding is, an already, is already a cooked process. In fact, the process of making black pudding takes about two hours plus cooking time. But we do want them warm the whole way through, much like you would have with your full English breakfast. Just gonna have a look at how these duck breasts are looking and they're starting to crisp up nicely that lovely golden brown color I'm gonna turn them around and let's have a look at this fella here and again just starting to look like it might be something you want to eat a couple of minutes on that side and then I'm going to turn them again and keep these moving in the pan Turning that over. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. They will render further in the oven and that will mean that they will come out nice and crisp without a hint of anything chewy on the fat front. So as you can now see, basically these are ready to go in the oven and finish. I've got the oven on at about 180 to 200. Um, you know your own oven. If it's, if it's a hot oven then keep it slightly lower. If it, if it struggles a bit then pop it up a little bit. Okie dokie, these are going in the oven on a baking tray, as are the bonbons with them. So, the duck is in the oven, finishing. The bonbons are on the side, we'll pop them in the oven to warm through in a minute again. We've got a pan that still has some of the juices in. I've taken out some of the fat, because those duck breasts do render off a lot of fat. I haven't thrown it away, I've kept that fat. It's wonderful for all kinds of cooking things. But we now have a hot pan with fat in it, and also those lovely little bits that the duck breasts have left that are just full of flavour. So, I am going to add some of that lovely, lovely stock into that. And I'm going to get that to a boil and reduce it as fast and as hard as I can in order to make it almost to the point where it goes sticky and glossy. So it's just a full on boil until that, that reduces probably by about two thirds. As you can see, that has now reduced down to a nice shiny stock, and I'm going to add a couple of things to that. Two things I should probably mention first. I've pushed the pan with the deep fat to the back of the stove where it's just going to cool on its own. I have also have my puree on the side, keeping warm under a very low flame. Well, it's not a flame, it's, a gas, it's not a gas cooker, but keeping warm. And the back of my stove, I also have now a boiler with a steamer on top. So, finish the sauce and I'll tell you what the rest is all about. So, I'm gonna add just a splash of sherry to that. Literally no more. 
and shake that round in the pan. The alcohol from that will burn off, it will add flavour, not a necessity, if booze is not your thing, don't worry too much about it. Then I'm going to add my secret ingredient, which is red currant jelly. I'm not going to add very much, probably one and a half teaspoons, and I'm just going to stir that into the sauce and allow it to melt down. It does two or three things. It obviously adds the flavour of red currant, which is great, but it also thickens the sauce quite nicely and adds a kind of sheen that's really nice on the sauce. Now, I mentioned the double boiler, and I also mentioned earlier that purple sprouting broccoli is in season at the moment. It is absolutely beautiful right now, so I'm not going to do anything more than simply steam it for about five or six minutes and then serve it. When perfection is this hard to find and this fleeting, you don't do much to it, you don't try and ruin it. So that's going in the steamer. And the sauce will reduce, and I'm now going to remove the ducks from the oven, and I'm going to allow them to rest, just like you would a steak or your Sunday roast. So, time to plate up. Our beautiful, beautiful puree of cauliflower. Let's get really chefy with this and show off, shall we? Big dollop on the plate and a quick smear. And on the other plate, big dollop on the plate and a quick smear. Moving on to the duck, I'm just going to trim the edges of the duck. This is a bit of a chefy trick to make it look nice and square, um, but also it leaves something lovely in the kitchen for you to nibble on when you remove the plates. So that's going to sit nicely there. And it's friend. I'm just going to trim the edges off. Is going to sit nicely oops there. Now quickly going to grab the sauce which looks absolutely beautiful and shiny and I'm just going to nap it over the side of the duck breast and then let it run. I'm not going to cover too much of the duck breast because I don't want it to soften that wonderful crispy skin but I'm just going to let it run a little bit down there and put a tiny bit more maybe in there. Lovely, lovely, lovely. Purple sprouting broccoli has been steaming for three or four minutes and looks a picture. So I'm just going to grab two or three bits of that and pop them on each one. tiny bit on each place and just so that I do not get those wonderful bonbons. One little bonbon on each plate. Only one thing missing now. Glass of wine. Bon appetit.